It's 10.15 on the weekend explosion. It is Rivash Sony Depp and Ryan keeping you company and it is time for Youth Kit this morning. Now as part of our youth special, I'm letting you in on one of our brilliant, most selfless minds. From Phoenix, Durban, Miss Marilene Chitrai, a spiritual eco-activist, graphic artist, 3D designer and architectural technologist advocating in youth peace-building activities and part of the Youth Climate Forum for Environmental Reform. How's that, huh? She also belongs to the Hari Bhakta Sampradaya founded by her Satguru, Paramahamsa Vishwananda. Welcome to Lotus FM, Marilyn. How are you? Hi, Dubash. Thank you. Yeah, you are you excited? Yes, I am. It's the first time I'm in the Re- Lotus FM studio, so I'm really? excited to be here. You look very excited. I am. Lovely stuff. Well, it is Youth Month, so uh, best to be excited as you possibly can. Yes, I agree. <laughs> okay, so in order to coexist then, Marilyn, with nature, we need to understand that we too are nature. How can we effectively understand the impact of our natural environment to our emotional lives? So, I think, Ravash, firstly, we have to understand that we all are interconnected mm. and that we are energetic beings. Yeah. So, we all have a divine energy inside of us that gives life to this human body and to all of creation that connects us. Mm-hmm. So, our emotion, whether it is positive or negative, has an effect on our planet. Mm. And our external environment has an influence on us psychologically, whether we are impacted by extreme floods, pollution or violence. Mm -hmm. So if you observe the current state of the world at the moment, nature is asking us to stop reflect, redefine, and repurpose the way we live our lives. We need to live with more awareness of our thoughts, our actions, our emotions, with an eco-consciousness and climate positivity. Mm. Being able to be more responsible with a spiritual life in harmony and balance with Mother Nature. So, not only taking responsibility of our actions, but our emotions as well, Mm. and what we give off in our environment, the energy. So, hence my work also has been a, a lot about promoting the earth meditation which is to bridge this gap between ecology and sociology using our positive intentions and emotions to uplift the planet with peace love and gratitude wow just listening to you right now your voice has so much of peace in it i automatically feel less tense I'm glad to hear that. Huh? I'm glad to hear that because I did my yoga this morning. I'm pretty sure you did. (laughs) Marilyn, you advocate for peace building among the youth. What are the top two social injustices among youth and how can we work towards a resolution of that? So I would say we have a lot of socioeconomic challenges, Mm. especially of unemployment, that is leading youth to turn to alcohol and drugs and depression. And it's leading a lot of youth to suicide because you don't know how to handle the challenges of life, the mental Mm. thoughts, and it leads to suicide. So normal education doesn't equip us to meet these life challenges. And I would say a resolution would be meditation and to have knowledge of life it may sound cliche Mm. right because we hear it a lot but the only way to handle our external circumstances and environment is to make ourselves so mentally and spiritually strong and grounded eternally Mm. that nothing externally can affect us Mm. we can handle anything that life throws at us and we can bounce back in no time with creative solutions using our intellect and spiritual maturity that is true yeah. That is 100%. Marilyn, how can we use the Earth's resources in ways that leave the environment healthy for future generations, ma'am? So, Ravash, I would say live life as a minimalist. Reduce, Love it. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> reduce, reuse, and recycle. Live simply, take only what you need. Go vegan, go local, and organic. Mm. Most of our problems are due to overconsumption, greed, and disrespect of the earth's natural resources and its creatures. So conserve and preserve so we leave resources for future generations. It is not easy, but we have to try if we want to be a part of the solution. 100%. We are live on Facebook right now, so make sure that you do join us. And you can, of course, meet Marilyn to thrive virtually. She's looking so forward to meeting all of you. And if you have any questions for her, you can ask her and she'll be delighted 
wanted to answer them for you. Just like me, my next question, why do you feel the need to incorporate cultural values in our decision making in the recruitment of our friends into our lives? I think this is such an important thing because uh, many of us forget, you know, moral value, culture system when we are choosing friends in our lives. How important is this? I totally agree with you and this is a very beautiful question. Mm. It's important because your association is who you become. Mm. If you hang out with people of no values, filled with negativity, you eventually become like them. So we have to choose our friends wisely. They have an impact on our decisions and actions we make in our life. So cultural values, morals, kindness, compassion, ethics all play a role in shaping our lives, our character, our behavior, and eventually defines who we are as people and what legacy we want to leave behind. So we have to ask ourselves, will our legacy uplift humanity and the earth and will it nurture and care for others? Mm, two simple questions that can have a huge impact on your life, isn't it? I agree. Very huge impact. Now, you use your academic qualification in architecture to serve your community on a voluntary basis. What are some of the fulfilling benefits that you have received from this? And I want to ask you this question because it is Youth Month and many of our youth have qualifications, have particular skills, resources that are available to them, but they don't really use that in service to the community, whereas you are doing that quite effectively. Talk to us about um, some of the fulfilling benefits, Emeraldine. So I think it's important, you know, um, part of living in a community is giving back to the community. Mm. And for me, I'm a social and sustainable architectural technologist. So I'm involved in a lot of community work, whether it's sustainable schools, clinics or ashrams. And for me, I find it fulfilling because it's using my skills and what I can do to benefit others. Mm. Um, I won't say it's easy. It's not easy. It has its own set of challenges and you can have a lot of setbacks. But always being positive and looking forward brings a deep sense of fulfillment internally when engaged in service to others, to the earth and to the divine. And it's an ongoing journey, I would say. It's a journey of growth and learning, of self-improvement and transformation. There's something very special about you. And I just have to say this. I, I, you know, listening to you right now, and I'm pretty sure many listeners out there, the entire of South Africa and the world that's listening to us right now, can really just feel a sense of divine energy and presence when you speak. You know, I can just imagine if somebody's in your company physically for maybe an hour or so doing meditation with you or, you know, spending some time with you, getting to know you, they would probably just leave your company feeling very at ease and at peace. Do you feel this way right now and every day of your life? I know it's not part of my questions to you, but I just yeah. have to ask you this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no problem. I think it comes with um, discipline, yeah. you know. Um, we faced with a world full of challenges and you have to build yourself up internally to be strong and so to be this energetic nature of being you have to like build yourself up and then spread that to whoever you meet are you ever stressed hey i have my own moments <laughs> you I do? do but that's the thing you have the moments you know you're yes. not stressed for a long period of time so in having said that what is your message of hope to our fellow youth on this uh, youth month so I love this question. It's my favorite. Yeah. And I want to say that youth are change makers. Yeah. They are agents of change and they are current and future leaders. And so our world is lacking servant leadership mm. that can uplift and change society for the better. And youth have the ability to be that leader of morals, values, ethics and love. Be that example of positive leadership. Walk your talk and be the change that you wish to see in the world. My favorite quote by Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah. And lastly, I want to say, plant trees, it mitigate climate change. <laughs> Just by the way. like oh, By the way. You know? <laughs> uh, Marilyn Chitra, what are your social media handles, my dear? So I have a Facebook and Instagram account, but I mostly have a YouTube account that you can just type my name in, Marilyn Chitra, and mm -hmm. follow my work, people I'm involved with, my networks, and be a part of us and be a part of the positive change. Be a part of that positive change. Thank you very much for coming all the way to our lovely studios here in Durban. We want to wish you everything of the best in your future career as an architecture, as an architect rather, and may you continue to be doing uh, the beautiful work for your community that you do because through that you can really motivate, inspire and encourage other youth out there to do a similar thing that could of course uh, 
um, you know, mitigate and of course um, promote world peace and uh, promote peace building within our youth is something that you advocate for. So continue to do that. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. And thank you for giving the youth a voice as well to be on your show and oh. share our views and our work. Appreciate it. You are welcome. And uh, for you as a youth to say that to me, it's going to motivate me to continue to do that. So yeah, continue to be a, a change maker. Well done. <laughs> Great stuff. Don't forget. Lotus FM. Yeah. yeah. Share the experience.